Now, on the reference sheet, and you, if you want, you can pull it up right now, there are a bunch of equations, and I've deliberately not shown you them yet, um, related to all of this stuff. This equation here, it's not one of them, okay? Here's why. What was it, what knowledge was required to prove this result? Right, it's not a rhetorical question. What do we need to know? You need to find the equation of a line? Well, two-point formula, that's, that's part of the course. You need to know that, okay? Um, what else do you need to know? We need to know where the points are, but that's part of the definition of what this is. This is something you're expected to know. So therefore, this process, you actually have to be able to recreate, okay? And people don't necessarily like that. Welcome to the extension one course, okay? Now, that's nice, but so what? Well, let me show you some nice, a really, really nice piece of geometry here, okay? Um, this is not just any parabola. This is the parabola in um, locus form, right? With like focal length and directrix and all that kind of thing, okay? Speaking of focal length, where is the focus? On this parabola, where is it? What are the coordinates of the focus? If the focus is like, say, here, what would those coordinates be? What's the x-coordinate? Zero, very good. And the y-coordinate would be? If it's the focal length, you go up from the vertex and you go a units, right? So this should be zero comma a, yeah? And watch what happens. Some chords go through the focus, some of them. Unoriginally, these chords are called focal chords. A focal chord is a chord that goes through the focus. If that thing goes through there, then these really badly messily drawn coordinates, sorry, that's a little more legible, those coordinates ought to satisfy this equation. Do you agree? Okay. So therefore, let's sub that into the equation of a chord and just see what happens, right? Into equation of chord, okay? Zero comma a. It's really, really simple because zero is just going to make this term disappear. What comes up on the left-hand side? Have a look. It's just going to be a. What's on the right-hand side? This becomes zero. Take away what? Just a p q. Okay. What would you like me to do? I think we can divide through by a. We can do one more thing. Hmm. What would p and q again? They're, they're the parameters at these particular spots, aren't they? What is the parameter again? We, we proved this like 20 minutes ago. The parameter by definition is the gradient at that point. The gradient at that point is little q. The gradient at that point is little p. What does it mean when gradients are multiplying together to give negative 1? They're perpendicular. Let me show you what that looks like. Wait, yep. What are we trying to find? We're just exploring. We're not trying to find anything. But I'm going to show you something that we just found. OK, here we go. So don't worry too much about all of my equations over here on the left-hand side. That's just to make stuff work. OK, is that thick? I can't remember if I made it thick for you. Yeah, it's good. OK, now have a look at what we've just got here. Right? Um, see this black line going right the way through? I could have been a little more fancy to restrict it, but that's the chord. OK, I know it's a line at the moment. But just picture it as an interval. Okay. Here's, here's our, um, our chord, and it's going through the focus here, right? So can you see this blue line is the tangent at one of, like that's, that's Q, for instance, and my orange line is my tangent at P. So can you see where the tangents meet? Do you see there's the right angle there? Now watch what happens. As we move, I think this is what I want to move. There we go. Let's slow that down. That's going way too fast. Let's bring it back. Oh, I want to change direction. That's what I wanted to do. OK. So can you see this point here? See this point here? That's the focus right there. That's why the chord, no matter where it goes, it's always passing through this focus. OK? So you can see these tangents here are always at right angles, right? Everywhere they go, I'm going to bring it back into the middle. Actually, it's going to come back into the middle itself. There we go. These tangents always meet at right angles. Okay? So using the equation of the chord 
And because we know what the focus is, we've proved this really interesting result that every focal cord, every focal cord, there it is, right there, right? The ends that make it a focal cord, they have perpendicular gradients, and that's what makes their tangents perpendicular, okay? Now, this kind of geometry, and the fact that it does this, is why parabolas are so special. Just like, do you remember when we did circle geometry? And it's like, oh my goodness, look, everything that's weird, like this angle is equal to that angle. Why is that? Because circles are special shapes. Um, when you've got, you know, a diameter, and you look at that angle, oh my goodness, that angle's a special angle. It's right angled. Well, you get the same kinds of things on parabolas, because parabolas and circles, believe it or not, are made of the same kind of DNA. Um, 